Hello, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to be talking about Sage. Now, if you don't know, up there, as the accountant, we have a brand new podcast. And on that brand new podcast, we've invited our cool friends. Because the idea is we want to make sure that you know about all of the awesome people within our accounting industry. Give you a bit of tips and tricks and help you understand what's going on in the background. Our first guest on Asset Accountants, We Have Cool Friends, was none other than Chris himself, Mr. Sage. And it inspired me to have a think about, well, what has Sage got for us accountants and you clients in this point in time, in 2022 slash 2023? And I thought, what better way to have a look at the software itself from the eyes of a QuickBooks user and see if it's of any good or not. So join me as we peel back the curtains and have a look exactly what Sage is like in 2022 slash 2023. This one is not to be missed. Hello, my name is Aaron Patrick. I am a chartered accountant, a certified UK trainer with a fancy new logo. That QuickBooks chap on the internet over here and head of accounts here at Boffix. Now in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how, why, and everything else around the world of Sage. Now, full clarification, I used to be a huge Sage fanboy. Sage was where I learned my tricks and tips and everything else to do with the world of accountancy. So I've got a real soft spot for Sage. But in all truth and honesty, Sage itself as a product kind of lagged behind a little bit when the likes of QuickBooks and Xero suddenly became on the market, bringing forward the cloud technology and really pushing what bookkeeping software can be for your business. And obviously with me being the QuickBooks chap, I obviously went down the rabbit hole of learning every little aspect there was to do with QuickBooks itself. Now, that's all well and good, but what about the competition? And we did a little look previously, so have a look at some of my previous videos. Make sure you subscribe to make sure that you know any future videos as well. But we've had a look at Zero, and we've had a quick glance at that, and we've had a look at some other software as well. But we've never really done Sage in proper detail, and that's what I want to do today. You see, what Sage has definitely done differently to the rest of them is it's created its own little ecosystem. And that ecosystem is designed to make sure that clients have access to everything they need to run their business. And that really excites me. The idea that within Sage's family ecosystem, whatever you want to call it, you can send out proposals, you can do the bookkeeping, you can do the account, you can do the tax returns, you can do some fancy reporting, you can extract data using software called Auto Entry. The list goes on and on and on, including payroll. And that sets it apart from QuickBooks and everything else. Now, QuickBooks is catching up in that department, and we've got some great content about how that's going to start offering more functionality later down the line. So really do make sure you use that subscribe button to make sure you're the first person to know about this. But ultimately, what's happening is it gives us the opportunity to see software going head to head and trying to find ways to make features more rich, more powerful, and ultimately means that users like ourselves are the ones who's gonna benefit. So let's first of all see exactly what Sage has to offer for us accountants and then you as clients as well. Let's have a look. Well, this is the first page, Sage for Accountants, because that's really where I'm gonna get the most out of this. If I can figure out exactly what Sage can do for me as an accountant, then what it can do for you as clients as well, it's just gonna make it really, really straightforward. So Sage itself, it's one platform for your success. That's what it says just at the top here. And the idea is, is that ecosystem idea. Have all your clients in one place, understand some categories relating to them. That's gonna be interesting. And also being able to go into them individually and finding details about them as well. This is where I get really excited about it because here it's all about these options. You get your client management, your account and your payroll. And within accounting, we get the opportunity to do tools that help you manage financial accounts, corporation tax and personal tax for every client. There's the opportunity for us to go in and look at other tools within the ecosystem. So you've got accounting start, you've got payroll 10, you've got final account, you've got corporation tax. And this is where I'm starting to get really excited about what this can do for us. And then the additional tools, go proposal, auto entry, so you can extract data, and futurely, which is a brand new one to the family, which makes the, the actual reporting even better than it's ever been before. 
Okay, so let's get straight into there. And for people on this channel for a long time, you may recognize this page. We've been here before. This is the page that we looked at when we looked at Sage for, for, for Accountants when it first came through. And this view here is all about seeing the information relating to your clients. You can see information relating to it. So I can manage my subscriptions just here. I've got the option between account and start, account and standard, account and plus, payroll wise. What I like is this tags option here. So in here I can see it's new. Yeah, let's add that one to it. But I can make it a late payer. Basically it's gonna help me actually look at the product, look at the company in more detail. So I go back to client list. I can see here that there's my new tag there. Here's my subscriptions that are working for them. Here's some action points. So I can edit details, hide from client or edit the tags. And basically I can jump straight into say the accounting side. I can set, say that it's a limited company. I leave it not back registered for now, but yeah, that's fine. Let's press all done. And here it is trying to get me to set things up. So this is cool, I like this bit. So let's connect your bank. Let's enter, connect to bank feed. Oh, here we go. This looks very, very um, everything to what we're used to. So yeah, link my bank account. Please. Loading your bank transaction, bank accounts. Here we go. Wonderful. So straight away, the first initial reaction is this is quite similar to how Zero approaches it. We've got one view here of all the transactions and then giving us the opportunity to decide what those transactions are. So let's create, first of all, this income coming in here and let's put this directly to sales of services. We can create a customer as well. So let's call the customer Bob, create the customer, press save and create and that then disappears from this list. So basically all the items that are on this list here are items I need to complete. So let's go through and let's say that there was some entertainment here and create that one. Let's, you have the option as well to match. So if the transaction was already in Sage, I can go into match, find the transaction and match accordingly. So that makes my life easier. If I've already added it to say through auto entry, things like that. But let's go in and see if I can continue on the create option. See if there's any ways I can do multiple ones. So let's say all of these are going to be um, post and stage rate. So let's go and put these in. Um, I've ticked on multiple of them. 18, no, no, let's tick multiple again. So it looks like when I tick multiple, the only option is I have to delete. I can't see, and let me know in the comments below if I'm missing something, but I can't see an opportunity here to do batch actions, which is definitely what I'm used to from a QuickBooks point of view, um, but it doesn't like I'd have that option in Sage. I do have the option to do rules though. So let's go and create a rule. And let's say that the rule is for expenses. If it contains or is equals amount and let's say it's greater than a pound so that's the condition if it's greater than a pound so this is very similar to quickbox in terms of creating these rules the money out um, and let's say the ledger account should be let's put it to repairs and auto max and press save so in theory then all of my income or all my expenses should say should have been applied for um is there any way to make that a actual rule activate this rule when saving okay so in fairness now all my expenses should be gone so let's get out of there oh apply rules to pending transactions your rules have changed since you last downloaded apply rules to pending transactions here we go wonderful There are 43 income in bank, bank transactions. Create all. Create all. And just like that, all of my expenses have been included. 
Uh, let's do the same for income then. I would say here is not having the ability to do batch action is a little bit slower than what I'm used to in the QuickBooks. But what is quicker is the way that we can just quickly go through and just analyze and, and allocate these. I find that really, really powerful. And I think that's gonna be a bit of a game changer really. So create, 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 all them are in. Okay, so what should happen now if I go back to banking, in theory, Oh, uh, probably missing, or oh, I would have been missing my opening balance, wouldn't I? So, hasn't brought in my opening balance automatically. That's one thing that QuickBooks would do for me. So just keep an eye on that one. But ultimately, they are all there though, and it is now just a case of me wanting to maybe bring in that difference or anything like that. Now the key for me is, can I reconcile this balance? So I'm in my banking area. Uh, I can see here a breakdown of it. I can put some extra information in. Reconciliations, here we go. So let's say that my balance is 18524, um, and then I go statement and balance, today's date, and the balance has changed, please price has changed before you continue, apply. Okay, it's come through and it's ticked everything that has already come through. It's come in as a target, a reconcile balance, target balance, a different. Everything's come through, everything looks good. So I press finish. This bank has been successfully finished. So at that point then, let's go back to banking. I come into the, obviously in the real world, you'd reconcile the actual amount. But yeah, the reconciliation's there. So interestingly, let's find out what happens if I was to make a change. So let's find a transaction. Let's move this all the way to, let's say, 1st of August search. Ah, oh, there we are. So let's say then that this train line one here, someone went in and amended it and added another 10 pound to it. 101 pound left to record is minus 10, but let's press. Ah, it physically won't let me, that's good, I like that. So I can't make these changes, so it doesn't matter how much I want to change it for whatever. It must be greater than zero, okay. Doesn't let me put negatives in. Ah, the amount paid up here though. What about if I change that to 10116? Is it now going to let me put in a, what put on? A reconciled transaction it was reconciled, but it has to let me continue. So it's warning me against it. Now it's saying that that item hasn't been reconciled. So if I go to my reconcile area, that transaction has been corrected. So I can see that, I like that a lot. And if I went to my reconciliations, it's not telling me that it's now not reconciled. Uh, but on the next reconciliation, it'll pop up. So the only thing you would do there is you'd always just run and reconcile, see if there's any items that have been corrected beforehand. So that's not a bad thing at all. Let's look at the summary page then. We can see balance has gone down, money out has gone down, money in has gone up. So I quite like these little ones here. Um, so let's create a new invoice. Put it against Bob. Uh, I'll be fine. I don't need an address. Description, Bob, other income, 500. Let's save invoice. Oh, need to main address. Okay. Save invoice. So I've created this invoice. From here, I have the option to email. So the quick box chat at profix.com. Send that one, let's see what that comes up as. Um, and then the invoice comes through looking like this. I've got a copy of my sales invoice if I only need to look at it. Obviously I could make this far better than that. That's like a very terrible invoice, but it that's down to me, not down to I'm not down to Sage. Let's view some invoices here. And again, uh, it doesn't look great, but that's down to me. 
all the information's there. And what I did notice as well, I mean, Sage's got their own payment platform, so you can turn on card payments here. Oh, pay out Powered by Stripe, so you can even just have Stripe being your connector, um, clear and simple fees, automatic reconciliation, automatic bank account transfers, secure and safe, so yeah, I can just go in. Um, I already have a Stripe account, so I could connect the Stripe and just go from there, but I'm pretty sure that just means take card payment would just go there. Makes it super simple, doesn't it? I mean, realistically, can't get much more simple than that. That's cool. A uh, cash book, that's, that's nice. A place where you can see all your transactions. Maybe jump into the transaction. Uh, see your attachment. So you want to add an attachment to it. Make it recurring. Looking good. You can see it's been reconciled. So that keeps it nice and easy and straightforward. Uh, contacts is just going to be the people you got. There's Bob. There's QuickBooks Chap. Uh, money into date. Balance due. Uh, banking wise, if you had five hundred pound coming in, you could then probably, or you'll be able to match that as well. And reporting wise, you've got age debtors. Oh, smarter reporting as well that comes in. Uh, so we've got profit and loss. Let's just have a quick look what that's like. Uh, I'm not. I'm not loving this layout, but it's just preference, isn't it? Um, it's giving you all the information you definitely need. Um, you can jump down and go into them as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, a report is a report. Uh, I wouldn't say aesthetically it's as pleasing as, say, QuickBooks, but I get what it's going for. I understand what it's going for. So we got, what else have we got? Um, <clears throat> We can do VAT returns or mercantile bank transaction. Love that, absolutely love that. Being a report, a debtor, so you should see that £500 that's owed to me from Bob. There it is, so that's good. Um, then we've got journals entries that we can put in, that looks good. Correct transactions, Ooh. make correction. I assume this is more of a journal entry. So if we say ledger account. Repairs and renewals, and oh, and select field, and say the amount is more than one hundred. Search that. It's bringing all of these options through here. All I can do is then tick them. Press next. Why are we making this change? Well, we're making this change because we need to, and we want to change them to take them out of repairs and renewals and put them into cost of sales, for example. Um, press review. Yep, yeah, we're going to update, say press update. Five items updated, as simple as that. So that's very, very similar to what we have in QuickBooks in terms of looking at reclassified transactions. I'm not sure if this is available to everyone, like as it is it clients and accountants, but if it is, absolutely brilliant. But either way, yeah, no, I'm really happy with that. I love the audit trail as well, because now you can see that Aaron changed it, because we need to. In this case, obviously you'd have a bit more of a, a better one, but you have also the correction if it's complete or not. So you can kind of have that stage, maybe you want to get it reviewed before you make the change, those sort of things. I really like that, I think that's brilliant. Apps and connections, so in here, Add some visit Sage Marketplace, partners. So the one I'm definitely want to look for is some point of sales ones. Epoch now is there. Square is there natively, so that's interesting. Inventory wise, uh, but net track is there. Excellent. So if you know. I was going to be adding an app to it. I'd definitely be adding Net Tracker. Um, let's go into there. Okay, so the app store's there. Overall, nice piece of software, isn't it? Um, not used it long enough to kind of get my exact teeth into it or anything, but so far so good. Now let's have a look at get more from accounting. So these are the premium features. This is where you can put your purchases in there. So it's more of a bills. Uh, argument products and services 
quotes and estimates and additional users so that you, when you upgrade you can see what else they have. Right. Let's see what else we can see in the client manager. Let's jump into final account, create a new set of accounts. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Here's my standard trial balance I'm going to look at. I can create journal entries. So let's put something in like opening and let's just put something in like um, check capital brought forward. Gonna do it, do it properly, press save. So you made those adjustments there. Compa create comparative TV, I like that. Uh, and then the updates option just here. We're setting this to in progress. We've done our trial data. Let's look at the data itself. Extended trial, oh, I like that. Extended trial, trial. yes. That's good, right back to data. Really, really easy to use this. Member set of account and generate it without that out. Really, really simple. Uh, corporation tax as well. Really, really, really easy. And then you can just create the files. And then once you've cleared the issues, you're good to go. I mean, what is there to say, really? Um, the software's all there. You've got that one ecosystem. Just having that subscription page just there, seeing everything that's all available, makes it easy for you to look after your clients. And ultimately, I think it's, it's a massive step up to what was there before. If you think back to the original Sage Cloud, which was very bare bones, this seems to have much more um, flesh to it. And I think there's definitely some really exciting elements to it as well. And remember, you've got the whole ecosystem, so you can bring in other solutions as well you don't have to just have those corporation tax and final accounts everything you can bring everything else in as well so yeah it's a really nice solution actually um, not many gaps and issues and everything i can really find from it um personally i still think aesthetically and ease to use quickbooks still has that so that better solution i think that's where it's going to always be very difficult to to be in terms of just the way it is and how easy it is to use but ultimately i think there's a, a lot here that's exciting um and i think it's if you were going to start your own county firm now probably be one of the better choices um just so you've got everything in there final accounts corporation tax all ready and waiting there's also personal tax there as well so yeah you've probably got everything you need there as well but well, let me know below, is there anything you want me to look at in terms of it? Ultimately, I think this is a really good solution and I think it's going to help push QuickBooks and Xero further as they look over their shoulders as to what's actually happening and what the solution is. So, thumbs up from me. Ultimately, I think with QuickBooks Advance and the solution that QuickBooks has, I still think it's, I think it's a product that has more options for you to grow your business into. With Sage, really, there's kind of a limit to how far you can probably take it with these solutions until you need to move to Sage 950 or one of the other maybe desktop versions for you really to be able to move your business to that next level. But Sage have so many solutions out there that you'd really find something for everything. So yeah, I'm mildly impressed, I think is my uh, end take on this one. And I think if you wanna know more about what I think, then do make sure you're subscribed because we've got some other features to look at later down the line there's new sections coming out there's new updates are, are released i know there's a particular piece of software out there that's got some big updates coming maybe involved in the sage family a little bit as well so i'm looking forward to having a test and trial of that going forward that is the quickbooks chaps view on sage and sage whatever they're calling this accounting and accounting start overall quite impressed not quite sure i'm ready to change my uh, allegiance just yet but yeah I'm definitely impressed in what's been done. So let's have these updates coming our way. Let's keep an eye on what Sage has to offer because ultimately it means that everyone is going to get some better software later down the line. My name has been Alan Patrick. This video has been brought to you as my first look, my first opinion, my look at it from a QuickBooks point of view. But yeah, if you're using Sage, I think you're into a good time. My name has been Alan Patrick. This video has been an absolute pleasure to do for you. Make sure you like, subscribe, all that sort of stuff, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.